Hi, everybody out in podcast land. It's me, Patty, from Four Boys and an NL Girl. And I'd like to say hi. I haven't seen you in so long. It's been, what, a month and a half? Maybe almost two months? The boys are out of school now. They're actually in uh, summer camp this week. We don't usually put them in summer camp, so this is a bit of a new experience for them. Uh, gives me a little bit of a break to prepare for a big camping trip we're going on next week, and then company is coming the week after. So we've got, uh, we're very busy around here. Um, it's a great summer so far. Uh, well, we are having fun. I can't say the weather has been great. We ha we've hit 25 degrees once so far this summer. Other than that, it's been in the high teens every now and then hitting 20 degrees. So it hasn't been the warmest of summers, but it's great. If you like sweaters, it's a great summer. <laughs> um, it's great to see you. I am here because a very nice friend got in contact with me. Well, this isn't the only reason I'm here. Um, I have been, the boys have been in camp all week, and I keep thinking I need to tape, I need to tape, I want to do a podcast before um, they're back home, and I can't do a video because it's too busy or because they're too loud or because they're jumping into the camera or in front of the camera. And I Hi, Michelle. Um, anyway, Michelle got in contact with me and said, I really miss seeing you. And I've gotten a couple other messages and such from friends and viewers. So thank you so much. I'm really sorry I haven't been on. It's really been because I've been too busy. It's not because I haven't wanted to. So what I thought I'd do is just show you a little roundup. Hi, Angel. A little roundup of some of the things that I've been working on. I do have one finished object. Well, I guess two, if you consider a pair um, uh, two objects or not. Why is it we always get the cat's butt? <laughs> Something about cats and their butts, eh? Yeah, you can't see it right now, but she's off camera, but I'm getting her butt again. Anyway, I have these beautiful socks finished. So this pattern is the London B ridge sock by knitting expat and i'm really happy with how they turned out though i had trouble with the heel so this heel oh look at the cat here this heel is actually from the um smooth operator sock pattern because that's the uh, sock pattern that i go to for my heels or if i'm having trouble with pretty much anything i i that's my go-to um so again the smooth operator sock by susan b anderson and so I did her afterthought heel with combined with the knitting expats um, sock pattern. And I think they turned out really nicely there. Now, I'm pretty sure, but not positive because I've lost the ball band. Um, Angel, you're right in the way of the microphone. <laughs> Sorry, you're probably getting that noise on the microphone. Angel, and she's not moving. She's like, no, I'm not moving. Um, I'm pretty sure that this yarn is a skein that I purchased down at Cast On Cast Off by Elegantly Twisted, which is a Newfoundland and Labrador yarn dyer, and I'll put uh, her information down at the bottom of the screen. Can't remember the name of the colorway, unfortunately, but it's a beautiful, beautiful color, and that's showing fairly true right there to the real color. So that's nice. I'm checking out the cat. She's not very impressed because I pushed her. Oh my goodness. I pushed her out of where she wanted to be. Shocking. Now I'm putting those there. She's probably going to come sit on them. What else? Well, my other big, or the other project that I've been really concentrating on that's fairly big is my um, June grass pullover sweater. And it, pull, well, I guess pullover, that's kind of redundant, isn't it? Hello again, Angel. So what I'm trying to do is get this finished. It, I'm doing it in, <clears throat> I'll show you the yarn information before I get out the sweater. So this is some yarn dyed by Elm Tree Yarns, who is a UK yarn dyer. It is a Superwash Merino Nylon Silver Stellina DK Weight Yarn, and the colorway is Mrs. Tiggy Winkle from Beatrix Potter. One of my favorite, favorite knits. Um, I love this yarn. I love the colorway. I love the silver sparkle. I love everything about the sweater. And then tragedy struck. <laughs> I'll tell you why in a second. First, I want to show off my bag that my lovely friend Catherine brought for me. From This is from My Cottage Number 9. I'll put her information on the screen. She's an Irish bag maker. I just, I love this bag. You can use it. It's great 
for knitting, but it's quite easily, you could easily use this as a purse. It'd be a nice clutch. Really, really nice. I have two of hers. So here's my sweater. So again, it's the June grass, and I'll try and, let's see, do I have a sensible picture? I tend, I'm cheap with my ink, so I often don't print off the front cover. Now she's got her back turned to me because she's so mad. <laughs> I'm in trouble with my cat. Oh, well. Okay, here's a small picture. Let's see if I can show you that without showing you too much of the pattern. So there, you'll have to look it up. June Grass Pullover by Carrie Bostick Hogue. I think is how you say that. Anyway, I love the pattern. The pattern's really well written. The problems with the sweater are completely my own. Uh, I have, so I'll show you. It's kind of hard to show you because it's, you know, quite a bit of sweater, right? I'm knitting on the first sleeve, and this is going to be a three-quarter sleeve, so I'm actually almost finished the sleeve. The problem is, so this is knit. See, there's a V, a V, where's my V? Here's my V. So there's a V. So the back is knit longer. So you can see that's not blowing out than the front. The problem is, I ass what I assumed was the front of the sweater is actually the back. So I have to go back and take out all this from here down. And so this has to, this I have to lengthen, this side here. I have to lengthen and this side here I have to shorten because my front and my back is wrong and I thought I was so close to finishing the sweater it's not I mean it's not a big deal it's not difficult to do it's just a bit of a pain because I really hope to get this finished soon anyway just to get there that's a that's a fairly true color representation I don't know if you can see the sparkle or not it's very um, it's kind of a mute very classy sparkle and then the side detail I don't know if you saw that before there's a garter stitch side detail as well so I'm really enjoying it I would actually knit I would definitely knit this pattern again uh, and next time around I would maybe remember <laughs> to check my front before I assume and knit it incorrectly so that's that. I'm happy with it. I started this in May. I'm For me, this is a fairly quick knit um, that I've, I'm this far by July because I am very slow. But I really want to get this off the needles because I have a sweater planned for my husband for Christmas. Well, it's not going to be a surprise because I need him to try it on. I'm going to do the cobblestone. I think it's called the cobblestone. Oh, cat, the bell is eating. The cobblestone pullover or cobblestone sweater by, I think it's Jared Flood. Anyway, I'll put the information on the bottom of the screen. But I purchased some Cascade 220 from Cast on Cast Off for that. And I really want to get started on it. It should go fairly quickly because it's uh, worsted weight yarn. But of course, I want to finish this sweater before I start on that sweater. So that's what's holding me back. My other whips um, works in progress are definitely... Um, well, let's, I'll show you this one. I just started this a couple nights ago. This is going to be a long-term, like, several-year project. I already know that, and that's fine. This is a mini, a mini user, and it is, of course, Melissa Alexander Loomis's Skananigans Nor'easterly blanket. And I, I love this pattern. But I love the name. When, here in Newfoundland and Labrador, if you get a nor'easterly wind, if you get a nor'easterly weather, that is known. Oh, the cat. Hopefully you were able to hear me because the cat moved my microphone. Uh, if you get a good nor'easterly, that's a bad storm. And I love a good blizzard and I love a good storm, so I love nor'easterly. So the name for this, this blanket is awesome. So it's a chevron knit. I had started off with uh, doing holding two strands of yarn together to make a DK weight, but I don't like it. I, I didn't like the fabric that I was coming out with. And I don't, um, and I think I'm going to have this problem as well with a flax sweater. Instead of knitting two colors together, I may have to um, actually get the correct weight of yarn for the flax, a regular flax, I think it's DK. Because um, I don't know if I want to knit a flax light or not. Because I'm knitting a zwag, a zwag, zwag, 
however you say <laughs> that sweater first. Anyway, this is how far I am. I have the progress keeper or is just there to show me, remind me which side is my right side. I don't really need it there anymore. But this is how far I am. I am using a ball of minis that I made up. So this is just a bunch of minis knotted together. Uh, I think it's called a magic knot. I used Crazy Sock Lady K's uh, tutorial. I pr I'm pretty sure that's the tutorial I use. Anyway, if you if you look up um, a magic knot or a knot for knitting, then that will come up. I'll put that information on the bottom of the screen too because I'm not sure magic knot is the correct term. Anyway, that's what I did. I've, I've knotted a whole bunch of minis together and put them in a ball and I'll do the same. So my plan, I also have some cottage sock in the color of, this is a Fleece Artist, in the colorway ivory. So what I'm going to do is intersperse, so around, oh, that works, <laughs> around this on either side of this top and at the top, because this is going to be a bottom piece, I will have, so I'm going to do five inches of color, five inches of white, five inches of white, five inches of white, add more color. So that's going to be uh, color with some white, um, white bits as well. So I, I'm looking forward to, this is, like I said, it's going to be, I'm going to get a, um, I'm going to commandeer because I have baskets. I'm going to grab one of my baskets and I'm going to put this um, either in the family room downstairs or here by my knitting area. And this is something that I'll pick up every now and then when I'm in the mood. So that's, that I, is going to be very much a long-term project. The next work in progress I'm going to show you is a crocheting project. It is in my lovely crocheting bag by Betsy Makes. See if I can put that... You can see that there. So Betsy is actually Sam, who is from the UK. And I've been wanting one of her bags for ages. So I got this, I don't know, about six months ago, I guess. And of course, it's got the uh, a crocheted circle, the beginning of a circle there. And I, I love the fabric. So I am knitting a pattern. And this is this purchase and... Um, eventual start was totally the fault of Allie at um, Little Drops of Wonderful Podcast. So this is a book from the Zumagurumi 7 book. Look at that. It is gorgeous. And here on the back, so here are the patterns on the back. So I've decided for the first one to do Salty the Seagull. So let me show you a bigger, scraps. No, I think I'm gonna call them salty, but this is scraps. Scrap, I'm trying not to show you the pattern. Let me put some paper underneath and I can show you the pattern properly. This is scraps. He is gorgeous. So I, right, anyway, that's scraps. So I'm waiting right now. Um, I couldn't find safety eyes in Michael's or anywhere local. So I've had, I ordered them online. And I think they're coming from China, so it's taking a while to get here. So I have gone as far on this piece as I can go. So that's how far I am on Scra Scraps' head and body. But the eyes need to go about here, like here and here. And I'm not going to be able to reach them to put in the safety eyes soon, so I had to stop and wait until I got the eyes. So I'm thrilled with that. That's so much fun. I actually um, I did a Knit Picks order terribly. <laughs> Actually, I should have done that in acquisitions, but I'm not going to today. Anyway, I did a nitpick order to order more. I'm using um, Dishy. Hold on now. Nitpicks Dishy, which is 100% cotton, is what I'm using for scraps. And I got some, I ordered some more colors from Nitpicks um, when they had, because they have a sale on right now, too. And I'm also using a Nitpicks crochet hook. So two, I'm using a 2.5 thing, yeah. I'm a very loose crocheter, so if a pattern calls for a 3 or 3.5, I always go down one or two sizes, or one and a, one and a half sizes at least. Um, and the fabric, I like the fabric I'm coming up with there. I think it's more true to the pattern than what the size of the needle that the pattern called for for my gauge. So I have, uh, yeah, I'm, I, the kids are thrilled. They really want to see this finished, as do I. I'll be back. So that was the delivery dude, and he brought an Amazon box, but it wasn't my safety eyes. I was hoping it was my safety eyes so that I could start and finish up my seagull, but 
apparently my safety eyes are not to be. Oh well. Um, what else do I want to show you? I want to show you uh, a, a very sweet gift that I received from my new friend Amelia who lives in the US. Hi Amelia. Amelia is Canadian but she lives in the States. She has just opened a Etsy shop, a bag making Etsy shop and I'm so pleased that she did because she sent me this beautiful bag. I have to show you her attention to details excellent absolutely excellent look how perfect her seams are like that's just it's perfect there's a handle on it a little tag with handmade by amelia on it it's a really nice size so i can use the inside fabric is beautiful it actually reminds me of the color of my socks that i just finished and of course it's a beautiful drawstring which i love i love a drawstring bag I'm starting to prefer them over zipper, but I still like my zipper bags too. So Amelia, thank you so much. That was so sweet of you. I absolutely love it. Uh, now that I've showed it on the podcast, I can start using it. So that makes me excited. And thank you so much. That was a really sweet gift. I'd ordered some, th some uh, cross-stitch magazine from her sister who also has an Etsy shop, and I'll put her information uh, down as well. And um, this came in the mail with magazine. So that was really, really sweet. Thank you. I don't think I'll show you any more works in progress because those are the main ones that I'm concentrating on right now. I guess a little bit of life news. As I mentioned, the boys are in camp right now. We uh, have a beautiful sunny day today, but it, it's still cool. I think it's 15 or 16 degrees so far, although the delivery dude just said, um, asked why I wasn't out front sitting on the deck, and I should be. But instead, I'm in the basement. I'm doing some cleaning of our rec room. We um, purchased a secondhand ping pong table from friends of ours who are moving, and we still have a big play slide downstairs that we're trying to sell, um, much to the chagrin of my youngest son. He is... Uh, he is too big for the slide, but A, he doesn't like change, uh, and he's, he's attached to this particular, it's a big, it's a big, it's an outdoor slide, but it's never been outside, excuse me, I got cat hair in my mouth, it's never been outside, so it's still in pristine condition, and the swing part of it, we've never actually put on it, so the whole thing is like it's brand new, um, so hopefully we'll be able to sell it this summer anyway. Uh, we are going to disassemble it and move the ping pong table in and the kids are really excited but the place it's a mess downstairs it just it really is the kids go down there and i'm going to have to ban them eating because i just found rotten apple cores down there i found pieces of chips and um, crackers down there it's just disgusting and i'm not down there often enough to, when they are playing to keep on them about keeping it neater so anyway no more food downstairs Hopefully they don't sneak it down. So I've got the couches all vacuumed. The floor is getting vacuumed. I'm doing the dusting. I'm just giving it a good overhaul. And uh, so that's kind of what my plan was this week when the boys were in camp. This weekend, my oldest son has a baseball tournament. So we're going to be busy with that. And next week, uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to... Um, hopefully I'll get a chance to do a floss tube um, uh, video. Uh, sorry, I'm losing my words. Do a floss tube video for cross stitch next week. We're going to be busy with some holidays. We've got, like I mentioned, some. Uh, my husband's family is coming, so we're really excited about that. And it, yeah, it's it's really shaping up to be a great summer. So I hope you're also having a great summer. I hope you're getting a chance to get a break if you have uh, small children or you're working or whatever you're doing. I hope you get some time to do some crafty bits during your day or during your week if you can't fit it in every day. I certainly am getting some in every day. I have found that with the boys at home, it's I'm used to them being in school during the day and I'm not used to not having any me time at all. Uh, so I've been staying up a bit later in the evenings, which is probably not the best plan, but it's kind of working for me to stay up a little bit later in the evenings and get some knitting or crocheting or something cross-stitching done. Um, because I find that if I don't do something creative like that during the day, then I'm just not myself. So uh, I've managed to fit that in, which is really good. So again, take care. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to tune in with you soon. And what I may do over the next few weeks is do some vlog style podcasting so you can see what we're up to. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy a little bit of that because I don't know how much more traditional podcasting I'll get done before September. Anyway, take care and I will catch up with you again soon. Bye.